Welcome to the next video of section 2, Collecting Coins. In the previous video we have learned about counting coins. In this video we'll learn more about collecting coins. Previously we developed a coin counting variable telling us how many coins are in the scene. However, regardless of the count, the player still can't collect the coins during gameplay. Let's fix this now. To start, we need to think about collisions. Thinking carefully, we know that a coin is considered collected whenever the player walks into it. That is, the, a coin is collected when the player and the coin intersect or collide. To determine when a collision happens like that, we must approximate the volume of both the player and the coin in order to determine when two volumes overlap in space. This is achieved in Unity through colliders. Colliders are special physics objects attached to meshes. They tell us when two meshes intersect. The FPS controller object, first person controller, already has a collider on it through its character controller component. This approximates the physical body of a generic person. This can be confirmed by selecting FPS controller in the scene and examining the green wireframe cage surrounding the main camera. It's capsule shaped. The character controller features a collider to approximate the player body. FPS controller features a character controller component attached, which is configured by default with radius, height and center settings, defining the physical extent of the character in the scene. FPS controller features character controller. These settings can be left unchanged for our game. The coin object, in contrast, features only a capsule collider component, which was added automatically when we created the cylinder primitive earlier to resemble a coin. This approximates the coin's physical volume in the scene without adding any additional features specific to characters and motion found in the character controller component. This is fine because the coin is a static object as opposed to a moving and dynamic object like the FPS controller. Cylinder primitives feature a capsule collider component. For this project I'll stick to using a capsule collider component for the coin object. However, if you want to change the attached collider to a different shape instead, such as a box or sphere, you can do this by first removing any existing collider components on the coin. Click on the cog icon of the component in the object inspector and then select remove component from the context menu. You can then add a new collider component to the selected object by choosing component physics from the application menu and then choosing a suitably shaped collider. Regardless of the collider type used, there's a minor problem. If you play the game now and try to run through a coin, it will block your path. The coin acts as a solid physical object through which FPS controller cannot pass. However, for our purposes, this isn't how the coin should behave. It's supposed to be a collectible object. The idea is that when we walk through it, the coin is collected and disappears. We can fix this easily by selecting the coin object and enabling the Is Trigger checkbox in the Capsule Collider component in the Object Inspector. The Is Trigger setting appears for almost all collider types. It lets us detect collisions and intersections with other colliders while allowing them to pass through. If you play the game now, FPS Controller will easily walk through all coin objects in the scene. This is a good start. However, the coins don't actually disappear when touched they still don't get collected. To achieve this, we'll need to add more script to the coin.cs file. Specifically, we'll add an onTriggerEnter function. This function is called automatically when an object, like the player, enters a collider. For now, we'll add a debug.log statement to print a debug message when the player enters the collider just for test purposes. When you run into a coin, the onTriggerEnter function will be executed and the message displayed. However, the question remains as to what object initiated this uh, function in the first place. It's true that something collided with the coin, but what exactly? Was it the player, an enemy, a falling brick, or something else? To check this, we'll use tag. The tag feature lets you mark specific objects in the scene with specific tags or labels, allowing these objects to be easily identified in code so that we can check quickly that the player, rather than objects, are colliding with the coins. After all, it should only be the player that can collect coins. So, firstly, we'll tag the player object with a tag called player. To do this, select the FPS controller object in the scene, and then click on the tag drop-down box in the object inspector. From there, select the player tag. This marks FPS controller as the player object. With FPS controller now tagged as player, we can refine the coin.cs file. This handles coin collection, making the coin disappear on touch and decreasing the coin count. On trigger enter is called once automatically by Unity each time FPS controller intersects the coin collider. 
When onTrigger enter is called, the call argument contains information about the object that entered the collider on this occasion. The compare tag function is used to determine if the colliding object is the player as opposed to a different object. The destroy function is called to destroy the coin object itself, represented internally by the inherited member variable game object. When the destroy function is called, the onDestroy event is invoked automatically, which decrements the coin count. Excellent work! You've just created your first working coin. The player can now run into the coin, collect it, and remove it from the scene. This is a great beginning, but the scene should contain more than one coin. We could solve this by duplicating the existing coin many times and repositioning each duplicate to a different place. In the next video, we'll learn about coins and prefabs.